All right, lads, so this morning we got a new version update, version 15.8.0, and with that, it brought a Brave Battle character ranking, transcendent slot recommendations, and also a guild quest clearance history. Three cool things came with this update. Not really the greatest update, I'll be honest. It's quite a small one in comparison to our past updates. So we are going to go through it relatively quickly, and I'm also doing that for my sake too, because if you can't tell from my voice, I'm currently a tad bit ill, which explains the lack of uploads as of late. I've just been taking it easy, but we are going to be getting the end of my ban announcement tomorrow, and I'll a lot of us have been looking forward to that, and we'll talk about that later today in our prediction video. Either way, first up, we have the Brave Battle Character Rankings, and as stated here, we've added a feature to the Brave Battle Character screen that shows which characters are being used in the most victorious Brave Battles. This function can be used to show the 10 characters with the most wins in C3 or above Brave Battles when assembling your own team. And if we head over to Brave Battles right now, you can see this button here on the top, Top 10 Most Used Characters. And in this case, in terms of win rate, and it does appear to update every 24 hours, Hours. These are the 10 potentially best characters in Bray Battles. It's by no means a crazy update, but a lot of the updates that we have been seeing is Caleb streamlining a lot of things and giving people knowledge of characters and different teams to use without needing to go onto YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, etc. And a lot of the things you need to know are basically in game now, which I think is a good thing. In this case, no one's surprised Orihime is number one right now. I would say Minia would come close to second or would come second if she was more available right now. You know, she came out last end of month, not everyone pulled for her. Yamamoto and also Orihime were available during anniversary banners, you know, end of year, 8th anniversary. It's expected they're going to be the most used characters. And while it's unfortunate we can't see the actual win rate per character here, I would assume Minia would have a higher win rate, but not that many people are using her as compared to someone like Yamamoto, for example. But the top five basically makes sense. If I was to actually rank these characters in the top five, I would put Minia second and then Yuha third and then Yama fourth. But I can see why the top five are the way they are right now. As for six, seven, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. I mean, these characters are kind of like random to begin with, right? Kind of crazy that not that many people are using Kuriyashiki nowadays. Like, to think Yama, in particular, this one, has more wins than Kuriyashiki is kind of crazy. I'm not sure why people are still using him over Kuriyashiki, but 6th to 10th place are kind of just always going to be like the, the extra characters, right? These spots might change every 24 hours, every season, every month, but I think these top 5, Orohime to Ishin, are dead set top 5 best Bray Battle characters, and everyone else is fighting for like top 10. Now, obviously, it is stated, and I do like that they are only considering the most victorious characters from third seat and above, because that's where the meta starts to become a bit more refined. A lot of the same teams are being used here. Below third seat, you're just getting a random assortment of teams. So this definitely more so represents the meta. And according to this, right now, these are the top 10 best characters. Top 10 most used, but at the same time, the ones that are winning most of the games. Our next addition is the Transcendent Slot Recommendation, a very small and minute addition to the game. But for any new player starting the game, this is going to be a good, just little guide on what Transcendent Slots you should be investing into. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I see a Yachi Unahana in Epic Raids with level 10 attack. It's ridiculous. But it's fair. Some people just don't know what to put on their characters. You would think it's quite self-explanatory, but some people just generally don't know. And if you want to have a look at it yourself, all you got to do is go to the Transcendent Slot Settings, click on the Recommended button, and it will give you the order the recommended power-up order for your transcended slots, right? As always, since we are using Aaron Yoda as an example here, he is an SP character. You want to give him as much SP as possible. That's why, first and foremost, his first slot should always be SP level 10. Whenever you get a character 2 out of 5, special move level 2, you're going to give him the focus slot. And then for SP characters, you go attack, stamina, and then also defense. Definitely agree with this order. But of course, that's only for SP characters. Some characters have different orders, and the game also reflects that. So if we use the new Rukia, for example, she's a Nat character. Character, a normal attack damage character that prioritizes doing damage on a normal attacks, and by that, you want to increase her attack stat. And in this case, if you look at any Nat character, you're going to see the same thing. Attack, focus, defense, stamina, then SP. Although, I guess that's kind of interesting, because I wouldn't recommend doing defense over stamina, personally. So I guess it's not 100% correct, but at the same time, for Nat characters like this, the third and fourth and even fifth slot really don't matter that much until you max transcend them. Personally, if I was actually transcending this rookie, I would go attack, focus, stamina, then defense but again, it doesn't matter that much. The main important ones is that you get attack and focus out of the way first and foremost. But then if we have a look at Brave Battle characters, right? Because Brave Battle characters are a tad bit different. In their case, their recommended slots are a tad bit different. And Caleb is saying you should do attack, defense, 
prevent stamina then focus? Not sure if I necessarily agree with that. Maybe that is the way to go though. And I've seen cases where people are saying stamina should be the second slot for Brave Battle characters. I would still recommend going focus, then stamina, then defense. So I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with the Brave Battle order here, but that's what the slot recommendations are saying for Brave Battle characters. And that's far that's the only differences I've seen across all the characters. At least according to Caleb, SP characters should go with this order, attack characters should go with this order, and then Brave Battle characters in particular should apparently go with this order. And then lastly, we have the Guild Quest clearance history. In Guild Quest, teams loadable from the clearance history are now separated by difficulty. A team used to clear a different difficulty to the one currently being attempted can now be loaded. As a result, it will be easier to attempt cleared Guild Quest on hard and the same team can be loaded when attempting the very hard difficulty for the very first time. And truth be told, this is probably the best addition from this update. But what you can see here is if we click on the clearance history, we can see the teams that are used to beat the normal, hard, and also very hard difficulty. You can see in this case, right this was like the nuke meta i'm using bambietta to nuke through all five stages eisen to sync up with a soul bomb and also chojuro to boost bambietta's soul bomb damage right it's been a while since we've actually nuked in guild quest but it is cool that you get to pick which team you want to use right depending on the difficulty and this is more so going to be good monthly whenever we get the nightmare guild quest which is actually scheduled to happen at the end of the month now the way the meta in very hard and nightmare guild quest does work is that whatever your team you're using in the very hard difficulty in this case i'm using this particular team is the same team and setup you're going to probably use in the nightmare difficulty so whenever nightmare gq comes around and we get to select the difficulty right let's just put it on normal for now right let's just say this is the nightmare difficulty well all i can do is click on the clearance history and then do this team this is the team that i would know i take into the nightmare gq and then i'll click on use this setup and now boom the team is ready to go so this change for most people if you've already beaten all the guild quests doesn't seem that crazy but whenever the nightmare gq does come back around which again is scheduled to happen next week right it is kind of a hassle setting up the exact same team once more every time the guild quest difficulty comes around now finally all you gotta do is click on the clearance history and select your very hard team for the nightmare difficulty because you're most likely going to be using the same team but at the same time this is also going to help those that are attacking the very hard hard difficulty for the first time we're saved in the need of setting up their same team multiple times. But with that said, lads, that was the video for today. Going over the new version 15.8 update. Quite small in comparison to past updates, right? But still some pretty decent stuff nonetheless. In terms of upcoming updates, we're still waiting for more information in regards to the achievement system, which we're most likely going to get, hopefully, next month. And we might get an official confirmed date on that in the upcoming dev notes. So stay tuned to the channel because we will cover that when those dev comments do get released at the end of the month. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Take care and peace.